the simplest way to illustrate transparency perhaps is by taking three objects that have a different color. Uh, you just have cyan, magenta, and yellow here and overlap them. And then where they overlap if these things are transparent, and I'm talking about transparency here, not overprint. If these things are transparent, then you see the other colors appear. So we now have blue, green, red, and in the middle, something that should be black if the monitor does a good job. Um, if you transparency flatten that, it looks the same. I actually changed slides now. Uh, it's difficult to see uh, over this kind of connection, but this looks essentially the same. The only thing you might, uh, you might see, I can see it on my side, uh, you might be able to see it on your side, is that where the colors touch, there is this hint of a white border between the colors. And that is very, very typical for transparency flattened files. Why? Well, because essentially when you look at the objects in this file, so if I look at the, the original one, I have three objects, three circles that overlap. If I look at my transparency flattened file, the transparency flattening process changes my file and now I have seven objects. Why? Well, there is no concept of transparency anymore. So uh, if I have color changes, I need to do that in a different way. So what you're looking at is a bunch of opaque objects where each object has a specific color. And these, this file with three objects is now a file with um, seven objects. This is very, very typical for transparency flattening. It breaks up the objects that you have in your file. Remember that that's going to come back in the summary of why this is a bad idea. This is another um, idea for those of you who thought that I was going to make a presentation without any penguins in it. Here is the uh, dimension of them. But what you see here is uh, you could say uh, three objects, the way that PDF works, um, I would probably guess five objects. You have two colored rectangles and then three lines of text. Yeah? So if you would look at this from a very basic level, you will have five objects in this file. However, because this file is transparency flattened, each of these lines of text is present three times in the file, and then it has been clipped to the borders of these rectangles, rectangles. Because if you look properly, the text that overlaps the, the yellow uh, uh, rectangle is actually green. And what you have over the magenta rectangle is actually blue. So the transparency flattening process, again, needs to break this up. Yeah? And this was a file saved from Illustrator. Um, it did a, a reasonably good job in the sense that it is all still live text. And it just included every line three times, one's green, one sign, and one's blue. What you'll see is that in many cases, it will do way uh, more horrible things. It might actually rasterize some of this text inside of my image, for example. Yeah. This is one of those examples where uh, where you see that that can have effects that you don't want. If you have objects that overlap, that may be easy to do in um, in a world where you have transparency. And if you have drop shadows and similar effects, you already have transparency. Um, it may be easy to do in a world where you have transparency. But if you flatten that uh, that type of file. Well, the flattening engine has to do something to make it appear uh, like, well, to not change the appearance, but remove the transparency that was used. And this may end up in things like what you see on the right hand side, where I now have a differently colored box behind the text, because that's the only thing the, the flattening engine could do with that type of, of file. And the more complex a file, the more you're going to run into such issues. So when you think that transparency flattening is not um, a, a bad idea, think about all of these points. 
it really complicates PDF files. It will make it bigger in size because it's it's breaking up stuff into multiple pieces in order to retain the visual appearance. It, in many cases, makes it more difficult to print. More complex files typically have more risk when they are printed. It reduces editability, of course. Uh, remember that example with the three lines of text. If I wanted to do text editing on that, I essentially no longer can because it would completely mess up the, uh, the colors in that file. It can cause alignment issues, and that is very hard to show in a webinar, but it is essentially what I mentioned, where objects touch or where the transparency flattening engine has cut objects apart, um, you have this risk that there are white lines. And often that is only a visual effect that you will see in, um, in Acrobat or in Reader, but in some cases, it may actually print like that as well. And you have defects on the printed file. And it can cause all kinds of color issues. Yeah? Um, a good example, again, could have been this text overlapping other objects where the text is uh, partially converted to an image. And in many workflows, images and text or vector objects are not color managed the same. And so you're going to end up with um, color differences on the borders of these uh, objects. And as a as a, uh, a last line in here, uh, Christian talked about RIPs and about what they do. Uh, what I hear sometimes from people is that transparency flattening cannot be that bad because essentially in the end, the PDF has to be ripped and that's the same thing, right? But it's not. When you send a PDF file to a RIP, the RIP prepares the file for output. And yes, it converts it to pixels at that point, and those pixels will be printed, but the RIP knows what's going to happen with that file. It is not going to break up uh, objects into other objects and manipulate the color spaces. It is simply going to calculate what it is going to use in terms of pixels. The transparency flattening engine has to do something that is completely different and much more difficult. And it does it at a much earlier point in the workflow. So you don't have all of the information about where the file is going to be printed, at what resolution is it going to be printed, perhaps what other software parts in the workflow does it have to go through. These two cannot be compared with each other. Uh, they are essentially different things. <music> Thank you.